Yo, what's good? This is Vic Minson. You're watching the We 96.3 Live Studio. What's happening, man? Oh, good, man. I'm happy to be in Portland, man. It's your first time here? No, I don't think so, but I haven't been here for a long time, now. Okay. That's what's up. It's a dope city. You know, we got Looks a little... dope. Y'all got to tell me where to go eat, man. It looks like it's probably some good-ass food around I mean, there. it's all about the cars, man. <laughs> you said it's all about the what? It's all about the food trucks. Trucks everywhere. Oh, word? That's what's yeah, popping? Yeah, you name it, they got it. What's farm? I'm about that. Ooh, some healthy food? Yes, let's do that. There you go. What about healthy food? Some killer burrito? Man, they got everything. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Right now. So, all right, so you want on tour with Jay. Is this the biggest tour you've been on to date? Yeah, yeah, it is, for sure. Okay. I mean, it's like one of the biggest rap tours ever, I think. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. All right, so... You've been on tour with Jay now. What would you say is the biggest gem you've picked up working with him on tour so far? I mean, you know, it's kind of just been like a, it's, it's like a sports season or something where you like really catch a rhythm, you know what I mean? And for a long time, it was like I wasn't on tour consistently just because, uh, you know, the game works in different ways. And it was like I could always kind of get more money going and doing these one-off spot type of things. But being able to, you know, kind of really, really practice my craft and work on it night after night in a very consistent way has, you know, just helped me as a performer. And I, I feel like I'm my best in terms of performance that I ever have been. Right on. That's what's up. That's what's up. All right. So a lot of people don't know you used to be into graffiti and you were an artist. Yeah, that's how I came up. Right on. What, it, what would you say is the where and how was the best piece that you put together? Hmm, best piece I put together. I don't know about the best piece, but I'll tell you about this one piece I was thinking about the other day. Um, you know, I was thinking about how, like, cops aren't that smart. And <laughs> it was, I was, like, 14, maybe, and we, uh, we were doing, like, a, a save money, like a big, you know, save money stencil. So it was, like, um, you know, we had printed out and uh, printed out these big stencil pieces, you know, because when you're doing like a large scale stencil, then you got to have multiple joints and you put them up, tape them up. And um, we were doing it on this rooftop. And it was so funny because we were across the street from the Dunkin' Donuts and you know, pigs love donuts. Of course. So <laughs> they were just there all night. It's like the middle of the night. And you know, it's like me and my homie, he's maybe 13, I'm 14 or 14, 15. And we're just watching the cops the whole time doing the stencil on the rooftop. <laughs> and I'm like, how the fuck did you guys really just get outsmarted by some 14 year old kids because you love donuts that much? <laughs> oh man. No offense if anybody's a police officer in here. No, never that, never that. All right, so you've worked with Jay, you've worked with Kanye, which are two of the best to ever do it. You've also worked with Pharrell. Is there anybody that you haven't worked with yet that you want to? Andre 3000. Okay, okay. That's Andre a 3000, Andre 3000, and Andre 3000. Okay. And Andre 3000. We got to make that and happen. three stacks. Oh, man, that, that whole photo shoot interview was so dope, right? Yo, he, and he, he said he got the, the gold teeth that, like, in Atlanta, like, swapped me to some, like, so fresh. Do you have a favorite record or favorite bar that you came up with to date? Mm, favorite record? Um, I don't know. My favorite record off my album is Home Record. Um, favorite bar? I don't know. I'm not sure. Okay. That's real. I got too many bars in my head. I can't remember them yeah, all. Yeah, I mean, you got a few. So, All right. In another interview, you said, the job of art is to disturb the comfortable and comfort the disturbed. At what point in your career did you realize that you had a voice? Well, you know, I started making music um, to express a voice. Like my, my initial writing you know, around age 14, 15, was all about the things I was seeing outside of my home. And it was about like the duality of, it, of the experience that I had. You know, I was lucky enough to have two parents in my household and, uh, you know, my mom, like, been working her ass off forever and cooking dinner every day, too. You know, not no stay-at-home shit. No offense to anybody that does that. But it's like, you know, I was just lucky enough to have, like, two really engaged, present parents. A lot of my friends, 
just down the street, you know. Parents was not around, fathers was locked up, mama on dope, you know what I mean, whatever. So I always saw those things and um, and those are the things I started writing about from the beginning because I could see the stark inequalities, you know, the differences um, in just the experiences of, the, of these people that were so close to each other. Like I, I remember growing up five blocks from Obama's house, you know, and like five blocks from the projects too though. And, Nothing changed when Obama got in the office. Back when I was doing my little my little graffiti thing, I even like I think I ran away from the cops through Obama's backyard. <laughs> this is before he was president, obviously, because they would have shot the shit out of me if he was president. Right? They got snipers on the roof of everything over there. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, that was always my that was always my intent, and I think at a point in time, just like growing up, um, growing up with you know, people paying attention to me. Um, you know, I had different times when I felt less responsibility. I felt less of a voice. You know, I felt more like, fuck it, I'm gonna say whatever the fuck, I'll, you know, do whatever I wanna do. You know, I mean, I, I still do, but I, I had kind of lost maybe some of that sense of using my voice for something. Um, and you know, I, I, I just, came just came back around to realize how powerful it is to have a voice that can reach people and I decided to you know really try to focus on using it for constructive purposes you know things that could that could help me help other people help the world just positivity in general no not positivity in general <laughs> <laughs> you know um yeah, not positivity in general, you know what I'm saying? Just honesty. You know, positivity is like, what is positivity? You know, who's to say? One person's positivity may be another person's positivity. That's all relative. I just mean the truth, you know? There's like, there are some things that are true. There are others that are untrue. There's a lot of gray areas. Um, but, you know, we get misled a lot, I feel. Like, you know, we grow up with this, like, indoctrination. Like, they really want you to believe uh, certain things that can make you like a good cog in their system. That's why they have you stand up and put your hand over your heart and sing a national anthem every day. Then you turn so when you turn 18 years old and they want to go make money in the Middle East by tearing shit up and rebuilding it, they're gonna get all those kids that's been singing the national anthem their whole life and be like, we've already programmed you. You know what I'm saying? So you're gonna follow us blindly. I'm just talking about the truth. I'm not just talking about positivity. Okay, that's real, man. All right, so on this tour, or just lately in general, who's one person that you got put onto that you think is dope, whether it be author, poet, rapper, artist? Lil Baby from Atlanta. He got this song. That's my dog. That's my dog for sure. I fuck with Lil Baby, man. Um, but I also, I did mention this to you earlier. I, I just started listening to Elliot Smith while I've been on this tour. Um, and that, I thought that was really dope that he's, he's from over this way. I just wanted to, I mean, I've, I've been familiar with Elliot Smith, but, you know, I wasn't, I only knew, like, Needle in the Hay. You know, I really started listening through his discography while I've been on this tour. Okay, that's what's up. 